I've said this before, and I'm going to say this again in a nice way. With the exception of you, I hate everybody. And I use that term because it's the strongest term I can use. If, there, if you can find something better than hate, let me know. Something, something more delicious than hate. I despise people. And of the group of people that I despise the most are mostly people on this uh, in this this configuration of whatever it is that we call this, this, whatever. There are more idiots, more nincompoops, more children, children who know nothing. And the worst of the worst of the worst are the people who find themselves for the first time, all of a sudden, enjoying a status as... I guess a commentator or a, whatever it is. And there are people who do very well all of a sudden out of nowhere and God bless America for this. This is so terrific. They have a podcast show and they know nothing. Nothing. But they have a nice studio, a nice little room with some purple mood lights behind them. Maybe some, oh, I don't know, some neon work with the logo of their show. I don't know. It just looks nice. Hey, guys. It starts off with that. Or you get somebody, and there's different forms. You get the Fred Ziffles. You get the, the mountain man. You get the earth woman. You've got the, you've got the neoconservative, and not, not the neocon. But this is the new conservative kind of like used to be. She she would have been the country club cheerleader type, and now she loves God and Jesus, and she's a conservative mom. And you know, and you've been through this. Then we got the the these groups of people who I just don't I just don't under I I I I tried and I just don't get. I don't understand it. I don't begrudge anyone. There are people who are very good. They should be the most popular thing by virtue of their intellect. Then there are other people that I just I just don't understand. I'm not going to go through and name the list, but there's one there's one in particular. It's the stupidest show I've ever seen in my life. But it's so wildly popular, and I believe it is because it looks like it's a show of merit. It look it looks like it. There's a set, and they got people sitting there. Whatever. God bless you. We are living in a world right now where we have children and nincompoops and a lot of other people working together who have who are making this cacophony of whatever this this cacophony of news. They're making so much noise it's not even funny. And let me get down to brass tacks and tell you what I mean. We are in right now a fight for the future of this republic. Now you might say to yourself, wow, it's not a democracy. I know you know that. It's not a democracy. It's a constitutional republic. We don't have tyranny by the majority. How many people do you know don't know that? How many people use cliches? How many people love Trump because they like saying Trump. How many people just don't understand what is going on here? What is at stake? How many people do you know? I know more people. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. It's incredible how little they know. But let me go on, okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to start something, and I want you to listen to me and listen very, very carefully. And I don't want you to be offended and I don't want you to feel bad and I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But we're going to have to talk about this new annoying group of people who think they are the experts regarding vaccines, pokes, jabs, masks, CDC. They are the voice of the mask hole. Or the anti-vaxxer, or the vax, whatever. The, I, I, I don't, I don't know who these people are. I don't know where they came from. You didn't even go to college. You've never taken a biology class. Who are you? Where did you come? Oh, 
Bill Gates and the dab and Soros and the nano and the G, the five, and it's the eugenics. What are you talking about? You're talking shite. You're speaking gibberish. You were speaking the lingo of your fellow conspirators because you're just a child who came along and you and you say, I think I'll, I'll t I like this What I'm going to be the new conspirator, kind of a, a funky alternative conservative type moon dog means. I don't know what they're talking about. When they were in the third grade, I'm sitting here talking about pyroclastic dusk patterns after 9-11. I've been there, man. I know, man. I've seen this. And I've met your type. And I said, oh, we're going to get to this. Oh, I've got so much to say. I don't even know where to start. So if you're easily offended, go watch that guy's show where he has his friends and they talk about the mafia for the mill. How many... There's four mafia shows. What was Jimmy Burke really like? Is Sammy the Bull a rat? Carmine Persigode. You've been talking. Can't we get somebody new? There is no new stories. They're all dead. Do I hear, if, if I'm going to hear about Sparks one more time, do you have anything new? No. Do we have no? Well, you know, uh, Jackie the Nose rolled. Wait a minute. This is where we are. We get into these little pockets of, oh my God. This internet was supposed to be really neat and interesting and new. I mean, there's a lot out there. So get ready for this. If you don't like this, please go watch that. Go watch that. Or 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 go talk to go watch to a go talk to a muscle uh, guy or a or a or a you know a bodybuilder to talk about the keto diet or whether uh, dumbbells are better than kettlebells and whether I mean, just this this drivel, please, you know where to go, please, because this is brutal right now, and many people are going to find this most offensive. But let me thank you for watching this. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for trying to figure me out because I don't fall into a category. That's my that's my fate. I don't. And don't want to. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell and all of this stuff. And as I told you the other day, this is the part that just gets me. This is the part that gets me. I was talking the other day, friends of mine, I'm saying, let me ask you a question. Because he was doing, well, we're getting our roof. I said, well, that's very good. Getting, getting your roof done. It's good to do. Well, we're getting the pool. It's, oh, it's very nice. Let me ask you this question. What are you going to do in the event of something that happens involving, oh, I don't know, something, God forbid, horrible, involving, uh, let's say, the need for emergency food? Uh, what are you going to do? And the look on his face was emergency food? I swear. Is it me? Do I not understand what, do I, am I the only one who reads the news? No, tell me. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just hallucinating. Maybe I'm living in this world where all of a sudden I'm thinking, I'm reading stuff they don't know. I'm reading about supply chain breakdowns. I'm reading about inclement. I'm reading the other day, I'm thinking, oh my God, you know what's planning in winter? You know what's coming with winter? El Nino. They got this ready to go. Maybe it's me. I think, no, it's not. It's them. If you're like me and you say, I understand this. I get this. Sign up right now for emergency food. Go to preparewithlionel.com. Save $200 off a three-month emergency food kit. But do yourself a favor, look at this. Go to preparewithlionel.com and see what they've got. And you'll say, oh my God, I never knew. I never knew. That's the part that got me. Look at, they thought of everything. Look at the, look at this. Look how it's stuck. They're ready to go. 
my Patriot Supply, these people do nothing but think about disaster and food and supplies and how you're going to survive. Thank God. And it's genius. Go to preparewithlionel.com and save $200 off a three-month emergency food kit. And you better have one of those per every person in your home. This is life and, well, the opposite, an extremist. Preparewithlionel.com. Preparewithlionel.com. Okay? Now, let's talk about some things here. There are these folks who love to give Trump a bad time because Trump did not go strong enough and hard enough against the vaccine. And I want to grab them and say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, you know, he was for wearing the mask. Are you an idiot? Yes. He was the president. Well, you know, the poke. Oh, you're calling it the poke now? Is that it? Or the jab? Is that what your little friends call it? Your little friends, you know. You, the one who has these pictures of, what is it that, that poke you think you have? A picture of, uh, what is it, uh, Gates? Ooh, he's got, his, he's got his needle there. And then he got uh, Klaus Schwab and George Soros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is a part of your thing. Yeah. And you and you perpetuate this idea because you have this idea, this lattice work of ideas that somewhere you know, and you can prove this, that Bill Gates is into nanotechnology or something that will go in and actually change the way. By the way, you don't remember this, but you but but before there was an MIT story story about how they would in, how they would actually um institute or initiate the vaccine by using a little pronged test that would leave a little dot, a little micro dots, uh, micro, I forget the name of it, that would allow you to be scanned to see whether you have this. It was really interesting. That never panned out. But I thought, wow, civil, impl civil, uh, 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 civil liberties imp uh, implications and I was talking about that and nobody but nobody was saying anything about that and I'm saying no 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 you don't understand it's not the vaccine it's the fact that there's a tagging device in the actual diet nobody said anything and these these people these new conspirators they were, they were nowhere to be found nowhere uh uh I don't know where they went they weren't anywhere to be found nobody knew them but now they're here because it's safe to come out because they feel, well, you know, now I can say whatever I want. Okay, great. Because now they're experts in this. They know all about vaccines. They're experts. They're experts in it after the fact. Okay, good, good. S say what you want. I'm a firm believer. But you're telling me that now they're upset with Trump because when Trump was running, Trump had a, Trump had a, there was some ad. Remember when, when Melania did the ad in her in her accent and she says, I'm wearing a mask and wear a mask. Go, Look at Trump. He's a sellout. Why is he a sellout? What are you doing? What are you talking about? He's a sellout. Do you know what the world was going through then? I don't care what the world was going on. I'm going through this now. Because I'm a I'm a mountain man and I'm a I'm a truth man and I'm I don't know what the hell they're talking about. There's elections and then there's policy. Let me explain something to you. While many of these children were at recess, we who were in New York at the time were red pilled when 9-11 came along. Trust me when I tell you this. And I've often done this. Sometimes I'll be at a a dinner or something. I'm sitting next to somebody. I said, well, let me tell you one thing. And I'm going to tell you one thing and I can prove it. And I'm just not telling you this. I'm going to prove it to you. And I tell them something and I say, did you know this? And their jaw drops. Drops. I said, you didn't know that. Please let me prove it. Follow up with me. Don't just take my word for it. How did? How come I didn't know that? That's not anything. That's just one thing you didn't know. So I've been around this. I know how this works. 
I know it. It changed my life. It's the most profound. It's it's the most. It's it's. They hide it in plain sight. It's not what you think of. Not what you think. Because people think, oh, oh, okay. Can you show it's an inside job? No, 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 no. So you don't even understand it. But I don't have time to go into that now, and I'm and I'm not going to waste my time. But here's what I'm saying. If President Trump had asked me to listen, should I mention 9-11 or JFK or all of those things which people consider to be conspiracy? <laughs> which, okay. Should I mention that? Never. Never. You're running for office. No. Wait a minute, what? No. You're running for office. You don't do that. You don't do that. I don't do that. No. But I thought you believed it. What I believe has nothing to do with what you're going to say when you're running for office. Do you understand this? This is the most, this is the thing which this is the thing which I can't get people to grasp. I can't get people to grasp this stuff. They can't. They don't I don't know what the word is. They don't get it. Trump is trying to lead the world when the world was freaked out. And he had it to, yeah, he had to provide leadership. And these idiots now are saying Trump can't be trusted. He's got to say what he has to say to get arrested. Oh, arrested. Just <laughs> elected. That was the best pun. Freudian slip ever. He has to say what he want, what he needs to say to get elected. But these people don't say no because Trump didn't do this. Oh my God, you don't understand how this thing works. We are in the middle of the fight for our lives. This man is going to. I don't understand it. And you know who else I'm getting sick of. And I can't stand these little babies. I can't stand them. First of all, the TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. The people who hate Trump, who have Trump, Trump derangement syndrome. And the people who love Trump and have Trump derangement syndrome. They, either one, they're, they're delusional. They, they, he's the greatest thing in the world or he's the worst thing in the world. I can't deal with either of these people. I can't deal. There's this, there's this, this new, I guess, form of a Republican. Something, there was some, something was, somebody asked me, do you want to go to this thing that Vivek Ramaswamy is speaking at? No, he's a phony. But to them, he's like, no, he's a star. No, he's on TV. Yeah. No. To them, the world is Fox News or Newsmax. That's news to them. Did you see? Is that Mark Levin? What is the matter with you? What is the matter with you? They're groupie Republicans or something. I love Trump. Why? I ch They're MAGA mania. I don't understand it. Trump's made some glaringly stupid mistakes, but he's the only antidote to this lunacy here. They don't understand. This, 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 another thing too, this uh, Hunter Biden fixation. Let me tell you about Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden means nothing. Nobody cares about Hunter Biden. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody cares about Hunter Biden. Get it through your head. Nobody cares about Hunter Biden. It's a distraction, to use your words. It doesn't matter. So what? The gun, the this, so what? That's not the issue. The issue is not the gun. Nobody's caring about his falsifying some gun application. It's the fact that he was involved in influence peddling, bribery, treason, and God knows, you, you want to talk about a racketeering organization. That's it. The Biden crime family. That's the issue. You're being snowed. I don't know what to tell people. But let me tell you something. 
This this vaccine thing, I, I I would love to report to the shadow government and say you did something which is so incredible. You did something. You were so important. You were so incredibly important because of the fact that you created things. When you and DARPA and and uh, Q Intel and all this stuff came up with this these uh, uh, investment banking groups and tech groups to come up with you know social media. You don't know how you changed. You changed everything. You changed everything. And what you also did was you've created this new baby. And this new baby is this. This is the one who says, I'm not going to wear masks. The masks are coming back. I'm not going to wear a mask. You're not going to see me wear a mask. That's it. That's it. You're not going to see me driving around in a car wearing a mask. No way. And I'm not going to double mask either. Can't make me do it. This is this is what you see. This is the most important. Yeah. And there's this real toughness. This real toughness. I'm not going to wear I'd like to take you back in time. What? Are, what how old are you? Um, Whatever. I want you to imagine being 1969, 1967, whatever. And there's a there's a draft, and you got to go to Vietnam, and you've got to risk dying on some jungle floor for a cause nobody understands. Do you? That would have been something. That that would have been something. And those people, they actually were were protesting. Now, what are you doing? Now, you're not going to have to go to war. You're not going to have to put on a mask. Let's assume, God forbid, you got to put on a mask. God forbid you want to go on the bus and you got to wear a mask. God forbid you've got to wear a mask. Holy Jesus, what are you going to do? The hell, the personal hell. Meanwhile, half of the population says, I love wearing a mask. I think wearing a mask is great. Thank you, President Biden. Thank you for your leadership, okay? What are you going to do about this? They have no idea. They have no idea. None. They have no earthly idea. Now, let me ask you something. When Trump finally gets done with his nonsense about telling us how he lost the election, they stole the election, what do you think the president's position should be to get him elected assuming the election counts, what should he say regarding vaccines and testing and masks? What do you say? To get him to win, not what do you agree with, not what makes sense to you, not what comports with your own sensibility. What should the president say? President Trump, what should he say politically? I ask you. Because I know what Gavin Newsom is going to say. What should he say? What should you do? Masking doesn't work. You think the president should say that? Masking doesn't work. You think that that's what he should say? Make your own choice. You think he should say, make your own choice. No leadership. Good. Do what you want. That's great. Masking doesn't work. The president's going to say that? Dick Bork says, yes. I don't know what yes to. As I type, maybe, maybe what? What's going on here? That's what I'm saying. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. Hello, I'm President Trump. I want your vote. Masking doesn't work. No mandatory masking as far as I'm concerned. You understand this? None. You understand this? No. What do you think? I'm not masking. Different issue. Good for you. What should he do? He needs to publicly support abortion. Okay. Nothing to do with masking, but very good. I'm reading what's going on. It's not illegal to punch anyone who tells you to wear a mask. Okay. You see, this is this is this this is why I stop and say, let me see if we can get into some conversation. No. 
No, because this is something I'm not going to write a thing. I'm, I'm going to write something that's kind of funny and which is OK. It's OK. But this is a, just a waste of time. This I, and I love you. I love you. You're my family and my friend. But this is gibberish. This is gibberish. We talk shite. We talk shite. These people, God bless you, but you're bold and brave and you're going to, and you would be the worst election. Oh my God. Your advice to win an election? Horrible. Horrible. How do you win? What do you say? What does he have to do to win? I don't care what he said. I'm telling you right now, masks don't work. Okay. And Fauci should be indicted. And Okay. And pro-life. And no, no, no. This is where we have to go. We have to have classes. And we should have Lionel's boot camp, maybe for one to two weeks in the summer. And I bring everybody in. And I say, sit down. Elections. Policy. Elections, policy. What do we do with China? What do we say we're going to do with China? What do we do to handle pandemics and the like? What do we say? And that is based upon what other people are going to say, what the opposition is going to say, what detractors. Say. This is it. This is the most important. And like I say something, I love all of you wonderful, great, and glorious people. But when it comes to elections, no interest, no, no clue, no clue as to what somebody in Des Moines is going to hear this. What? You're going to what? What are you going to tell young people about climate change? Well, this is a good one. That's stupid. Nobody cares about climate change. Climate change is a junk, right? So long, young voters. Go ahead. Well, you know what? Screw them. I'm right. I know you're right. But you just lost all the young voters. Well, then we lost them. So what? That's the way people think. That's, the why, that's why we don't know anything. We don't know anything. We don't know anything. Nothing. <clears throat> Years ago, Ed Koch, who everybody knew was gay, the mayor of New York, said, Ed, why don't you come out gay? You're in New York. You know, why don't you just say you're gay, admit you're gay, and just do the right thing, especially when AIDS was coming on. And he said, are you crazy? What? And it's okay. We don't care. They care. He understood. There were some other reasons too. A different generation. I told you this one time. We read this on this Air America cruise. Gary Hart, the senator, Mark, uh, Mark um, Green, who was the control. Anyway, big lefty work with Ralph Nader and whatever. Rachel Maddow, we're on this thing. And she says, I think President Obama, who was running then, should come out and admit or, or, or should endorse this idea, this notion of, you know, uh, gay marriage. And they said, no, what are you, oh, this is, the, these are two of the most liberal, go, no, what are you kidding me? No. Do you want him to win? And she looked like, what? Why wouldn't anybody be in favor of a politician who was in fa in favor of gay marriage. Like, this is an election. This isn't policy. This isn't you as an individual citizen saying some great stuff about whatever. No, 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 no. This is this is this is the thing which I don't understand this. I don't, I don't get this. And I don't understand why Trump, Trump thinks he's got that magic again. And he's got the magic because for some reason he's going up in these poll numbers despite the fact that he's being indicted. He's also going up in poll numbers because he realizes there's really nobody against him who is that 
really not good. Ron DeSantis is the best thing there is. And if Ron DeSantis is the best thing there is, that's it. Now, let me tell you something. There are issues about masking, about uh, Operation War Speed. People loved the fact that he came up with Operation Warp Speed. And now these others are saying, I'm not going to vote for him. He should have never did. But wait a minute. You're, he's going to go and say, when the world was about to collapse, I don't care whether it was going to collapse. I knew better because I'm smart. I'm a conspirator. I go to all the great websites. I use for I know jabbers and vaxxers, and I know all of the, the 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 argo argot. I know the lexicon, the lingo. I speak the language. I talk to friends of mine. We're basically children who've never run for office, but we have this idealized sense of truth and right and wrong. And he should have said this. He said, "You're an idiot." Well, maybe I'm an idiot. But by God, I'm part of this movement. What is it? You know, the jabbers. The what? I don't know who these people are. What do you think? And they're really good. They're, they're great at saying no. They hide behind the door and they say, no. I was trying to find this. I was trying to find. By the way, Liz Solak, thank you so much. You've got to like this. I want to win this. You've got to like this. Okay, this is this is my thing. You've got to like this. And thank people for reminding me. Like this. Subscribe to the channel. Like this. Very, very important. Very, very important. <laughs> Look at this. Silver Fox was just was just declined regarding a super chat. Give it again. Give it another shot. Come on, Silver Fox. See if it makes any sense. I I got to tell you something. I I maybe maybe I'm just tougher than a lot of people. You're not going to slow me down. I'm not going to get freaked out over stuff that doesn't really matter. We survived the mask thing. It's coming back one way or another. How does Trump win this? How do we undo this Bezor, how does this thing work? That's what I want to understand. How does this thing work? I don't understand it. That's the part which is the most important. That's the part which is the most critical. That's the part which is the most critical. I don't care how anything is done other than, this is important, I want to win. I want to win. That's it. I want Trump in so he can do everything he can to undo this. And, and I hope, and I, and I, I say this and I know I'm kind of wasting my time, but I wish somehow there was this idea that he has these people coming to him and he comes forward and they say, listen, Mr. President, you don't know who we are. We'd rather you not know us, but we're the white hats. And we represent a group of people around the world. And we represent some people who want to see you in. But we can't necessarily do it. We can't do it because, well, it's kind of who we are. But we want you to understand something, sir. And this is very, very critical. We want you to understand something. We know we have a plan for you to say, to basically undo, to undo Everything that is being done in this world of yours, this, how do we say this? Everything that is being done, everything at the, at the corporate institutional government level. This is, this is where we are. And we know how you can go in and sign this executive order and this executive order to destroy this agency, this group, this group, you could fundamentally be responsible for disentangling this horror show. That's what we want you to do, sir. Can we help you? Will you let us help you? Will you? Can we do this, sir? This is what I hope is done. This is the smart Trump, the brilliant Trump, the Trump who comes along and says, okay, I'm going to listen now. 
And then all of a sudden, when Trump comes into office, people are saying, do you know what he's doing? I think he's caught on to us. Why? Because he just signed a series of executive orders that only, only we know about. He just got rid of about 12 specific areas of government by virtue of what he's done. That Let me stop right there. Remind you, like this video, subscribe to it. I also want to talk to you too about our friends at MyPillow. This is a guy, Mike Lindell, who said, again, I can't say this enough. He has a wonderful product. I don't want you to think, oh, you know, just buy these wonderful products and slippers and percales and duvets and bedspreads because of his political ad. No, that's not it. But it just so happens that a group of people told him, no, Mike, you can't speak. No, Mike, you can't do this. And no, Mike, screw you and you're dumb and you're, you know, your your Trump stuff. And we're going to shut you down. And we're bed, 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 on him. That's it. Well, guess what? He's still there and they're gone. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, and buy everything you can. Promo code Lionel. I don't care how much it costs. You do what I say. It's great stuff, by the way. But we are in a fight. We need to support a lot of people. Veterans, teachers, parents, law enforcement, name it. It's a different world right now. And we start at different levels. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, or call 800-645-4965. And watch how fast Mike answers the phone. It'll blow your mind. You got it? All right. That simple. Now, a couple of things here. This is important. Do you remember a while back? No. But I'm going to try this anyway. You don't. Maybe you do. I don't know. President Obama came along and he says, I'm going to sign this thing called the NDA, the National Defense Authorization Act, and I'm going to authorize, and I'm going to allow for the reallocation, the redistribution, the re, the re, basically the gifting of high-power military-type equipment to individual cities, individual police departments, to militarize them. Now it's the opposite. We went from hyper-militarization of the police, a complete destruction of posse comitatus, a Robocop mentality, and now the opposite. The opposite. What was that about? We went from let's keep these people shut down to let's defund and reimagine the police. This is a different world. Everything is different. Everything is different. And instead of, and listen to me, and don't take this the wrong way, please. And you know when I say don't take this the wrong way, people are going to take this the wrong way. But that's the way it goes. Listen to me carefully. You should look at things and ask yourself the question. Wait a minute, last Roman, hold it. Says, do you Trump would take on the three-letter agencies? If so, would he survive his term? Uh, last, uh, Roman, thank you so much. Do you think Trump will take? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 Absolutely. And thank you, dear friends. See, Gray, it works, at least for this man. Maybe they're keeping an eye on you. Uh, Mr. Roman or Ms. Roman or whoever, uh, let me ask you this question. The answer is yes, yes. And the reason for it is simple. Let me see if I can explain it to you. The reason for it is simple. To go after the three agency group, as you say, is a fascinating subject, a fascinating thing. And what it means is you are never going to deconstruct the three agencies. Understand this. You ready for this? You're going to have to say, how do I work with them? I remember recently I was explaining, please research the brothers Dulles, please learn where they came from. Realize, understand the etymology, the genesis, the origin of these groups, where they came from overnight. Who are these people? What is CIA? Remember when, C when NSA was, everybody's in the NSA. Remember there was Booz Hamilton or whatever his name was. You had uh, uh, 
Edward, remember Snowden? Is Snowden anywhere around him? Oh, yeah, remember Snowden? Hey, hi, hi. Yeah, it's the Snowden guy. What about, uh, what about uh, Assange? Oh, yeah, it's Assange. See, typical, we just forget. You know, they're big in the news one minute, and then we forget who they are. 1947, Truman comes along. Truman signs the National Intelligence Act, and all hell breaks loose. And now we've codified them. And prior to this, World War II, OSS, Bill Donovan, uh, World War II, this wonderful admix, just this, this, this group of people who worked together, these fascinating people. Why are they interesting? I'll tell you why they're interesting. They were interesting because of the fact that during World War II, we reached out to some people who were not necessarily good folks. Before it was the, the CIA, OSS, they worked with who? The mob, the mafia. Before they were the mafia. But, 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 but the Sicilian mafia, the Sicilians, Cassiofero, uh, Calogero uh, Vizzini, and these, these big, serious, the, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, Wome the Onore, the Men of Honor, you know, that, 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 wow. We needed them. We didn't care who they were. And then after that came, they said, well, a deal's a deal. So we made sure they were put in as provincial heads and mayors. We created the Sicilian Mafia. We did. We created the Sicilian Mafia. And what was the problem then? What was the deal we made with the mafia? You're going to get rid of Mussolini, right? Yeah, because they had this fellow named Cesare More. And More was the 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 Torquemada, the 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 interrogator. Oh, if it's do you see how this works? Do you see where this ball of wax and string is so so entwined, so knotted up, so connected? Mob, uh, uh, Axis, Mussolini. Us, you know who Mussolini's best buddy was? Will Rogers. What? See, there was no black hat, white hat. It was gray hats and off gray. It was a different world then. Dulles comes along. CIA. And then Arbenz. Uh, Sukarno in Indonesia. Uh, Guatemala. Uh, Mossadegh. Operation um, Ajax with Kermit Roosevelt. And then there was um, Lumumba and Congo. I mean, it just goes on and on. And they and, and here comes JFK doesn't know what the hell, who are, what are we doing here? And this was all Alan Dulles. This was Dulles and John Foster. This was this post-World War II and then, Kate, remember Gladio? We talk about Gladio every now and then. Kind of the stay behinds, kind of keep an eye on Europe and what's going on with, with Russia. And then pre, you know, Iron Curtain. Oh, anyway, 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 anyway. So to go back, last Roman, that, those are the three agencies. FBI was... One of the things you have to realize is they are guard dogs. They don't necessarily, CIA has a little bit more of an independence, but FBI is the tool of the original, of, of the group. If, if Trump could, if there could be, there could be, if, if he got rid of the heirs and others and those, those people, you could have them go back to things like going after kidnapping, actually uh, investigating, uh, you know, child trafficking, bank robberies, things like that. That would be terrific. So there's a way of working with them. But the idea of them being rogue, they were told by this. Because the reason why is that Trump represented a threat to this system. When you see Jim Jordan, when you see Nancy Pelosi, when you see, you see from Grassley to Mitch McConnell to whoever it is, John, John Kennedy, who is this Rufus T. Beauregard, corn porn, porn, foghorn, leghorn nonsense. It's such a joke. It's a joke. Pretend uh, ambivalence. Pretend. Anyway. 
Trump res- represents the threat to that. And he can have people absolutely say, to get to the word out, I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. I want you to lay off me. That's all. Is that a deal? Yeah. I'm going to have to look the other way too. You're going to have to look the other way too. I've got to stop this internal shadow government. We have to crush that. I'm not worried about that. I'll make a deal with the CIA any day. It's the people that tell the CIA what to do. That's the one I want to deal with. And yes, that's a little bit of Gates and others as well. And once you understand this, it's kind of like the ghost in the machine type of a concept. If you don't, if you, if you really don't grasp the idea of who runs the show, then we are forever gone. All right, my friends, that is that. Thank you. Last Roman, thank you so much for that. You are more than kind. More than kind. I thank you so much for your for your felicity in your in your thoughts. Let me remind you, please follow Mrs. L at Lynn's Warriors. Her, her message is so critical, so important. That's at Twitter, at Lynn's Warriors. Very, very important stuff. Very, very, very critical. Very, very important. In fact, where is she? She would be right, uh, she would be right uh, here. Here we go. Right there. There we go. Follow Lynn's Warriors on X. I still can't see X on Twitter, which is so terrific. By the way, thank you so much for following me at Lionel Nation. We appreciate this. And by the way, just did a brand new video. The three three person said a more brutal, a more brutal uh, version of this that drops at eleven a.m. But the musical portion of this. Remember, I do three things. There's, there's a story. There's the video, and there's a musical selection. And what I do is I bring to your edification, either a, an introduction or a review, a reminder of some of the greats that we've had. Now, one of the greats that we have in this country that was so responsible for rap and spoken word music and hip hop is Gil Scott Heron. Gil Scott Heron was a genius. Johannesburg, the revolution won't be televised, uh, the bottle, Lady Day and John Coltrane, just, he was one of the initial primogenitors, the pater familiuses, I guess, pater from yeah, of um, of hip hop rap. It goes back, it, 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 Cab Calloway, Hank Snow, you know that. But Gil Scott Heron. So every day, I always introduce you to somebody new, a new form. There's some new stuff right now. The good news is the music that is available right now, by virtue of, and what Spotify is putting out. Stones dropped a new album. They're going to be doing it pretty soon. Um, Dan Tominsky's got a brand new one. That's a great one about uh, Jimmy Rogers. Dan Tominsky, who was the voice with uh, Alison Krauss. Excellent. Excellent. Hardcore. Really good Americana. Bluegrassy country. Real bluegrass. Not in real country. Not these Fred Ziffels who all of a sudden, they figured it out. You know, but, Okay, that's fine. Listen, protest music is always appreciated. As long as people like music, that's all I care about. So in any event, so that's that. That's at lionelmedia.com should you want to join beyond beyond the paywall, as we say, beyond the, uh, the whatever. In any event. Okay, dear friends, have a great and glorious day. Thank you so much for your uh, being a part of this. We mean this sincerely. You have been so terrific and so nice to us. Oh, wait a minute, hold it. Here's Edie Crowley, ladies and gentlemen. Super sticker. Ladies, Edie. Edie, whoa. Thank you, Edie Crowley. Edie's got a super sticker. Bless her heart. So, so kind of you. That breaks my heart when you do that. It really do. Because it means that, that you care. That's all that matters. All right, dear friends, have a great and glorious day. See you tonight at uh, 7 p.m. Don't forget, videos. Loads of videos. Follow them. Make sure you subscribe to Lionel Nation. All right, friends. Have a great and glorious day. See you tonight at 7. And don't forget these words. The monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue you. Dead, dead.